Show on back with part three. Let's continue here. And again, as we read in uh, Thessalonians, right? Because my title is Because They Received Not the Love of the Truth, right? Right, with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, right, that are going to be destroyed, are being destroyed, and will continue to be destroyed because they receive not the love of the truth, right, which is the report, these scriptures, okay? This truth, wisdom, knowledge, understanding of the scriptures, that they might be saved, all right? So what does it say over here, Revelation 13? And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. All right? By means of those miracles, which are his technologies. All right? That's his miracles. Okay? He maketh fire come out of the sky. All right? His bombings. All right? Whether World War I, World War II, B-52 bombers, and World War uh, modern-day warfare, he uses drones. Right? You know, as well as his bombers, but he also has drones, all right? But he deceived them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying unto them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, okay? And again, image, all right, to the beast. And the beast is the system, and that's the image, people, all right, the beast itself is talking about Esau, and the image is the image of the Roman Empire, all right? Image. See what this is? Icon. Strong's G. 1504, Icon, Icon. Icon, image, figure, likeness, right? They put up their own images, right? I already showed you people all that already, okay? All right? The image of the Son of God into which true Christians are transformed is the likeness not only to the heavenly body but also to uh, and bless his state of mind, you see, because it deals with the mind. Okay, so this man has perverted people's mind with his strongholds, his deceptions and lies. Okay? Do you understand? All right? So you got Israelites walking around thinking, you know, that, you know, some some guy out of the Renaissance, Caesar Borgia, is, is the son of God. And nothing could be further from the truth. That's man. And everything, you know, you're talking about blasphemy here. All right? Okay? But the image that they follow, see, he deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which had the power uh, to do in the sight of the beast, saying unto them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast right, meaning the Roman Empire, which had the wound of the sword and did live. That's the Roman Empire, people, right, the fourth and final beast. America, Babylon, the great, simply represents the last leg and extension of the revived Roman Empire, all right? She's the whore, the harlot, okay? She has many titles, many names, daughter of Babylon, okay? Daughter of the Chaldeans, mystery Babylon, the great. Mother of harlots, the whore. Okay? You understand who is also uh, known spiritually as Sodom, as in Sodom and Gomorrah, spiritually Egypt, as being the house of bondage for the Israelites. You understand? Spiritually Syria. All right? And again, dealing with the Assyrians, you know, who had the northern kingdom in captivity. All right? Uh... See, he exercises all power of the first beast, meaning the Roman Empire. And he causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the beast. 
you see that? To worship the beast, right? And he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast and that the image of both speak and cause as many that would not worship the image. So if you don't bow down to these people and take their uh, that serpent juice, what's going to happen here? So, and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You see that? All right? You understand that? All right? And he calls it both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive, okay, the karagma. All right? In their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no one might buy or sell say he who had the karagma or the name of the beast and the number of his name. And here's a key. Here's wisdom. Does everybody have wisdom? No, they don't. Okay? Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast. Right? So you need wisdom to, to get in. You know, the Bible's coded. Okay? The Bible's coded. What do we mean by that? Okay, what do we mean by that? All right. I'll show you what we mean. Okay, give me a minute. All right, this is Revelations 14 and 10. Now, those that bow down to worship, you know, the beast, you know, the image, the beast, the image, you know, and the karagma, all right? Well, what you're doing is you're showing and giving reverence, you know, to your masters, your rulers, who are the Edomites, more precise, the international banking families, the Rothschilds, the Oppenheimers, the Rockefellers, et cetera, et cetera, 13 families and all. That's what you're doing, all right? You're choosing them over your power, okay? And if you go to uh, Isaiah, the 30th chapter, as it says, they take counsel, but not of me, okay? You, you, you rather trust in Egypt, because again, America, Babylon, the gate is spiritually Egypt. You trust in Babylon. The daughter of Babylon, you trust in Esau, Edom, the Edomites, over your power, over Yahweh Bachim, Yahweh Shai. Well, for doing that, and you you taking the the serpent's uh, juice, and you're going to take the karagma. Well, this is what's going to happen to you. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, his righteous anger, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, that thermonuclear fire, all right, that's what that fire and brimstone is, that thermonuclear fire from the ICBMs, plus you have that concentrated laser fire, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. All right, now let me show you something else here. All right, Revelations 19, uh, 19 to 20, all right, to show you this man is deceiving people right in your faces. He's doing it, okay? Again, you know, because they received not the love of the truth, right? With all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them, that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved, right? What does it say here? And the beast was taken, right? That's the system. It's going to be taken out. He saw his military, all of that, right? 
with the false prophet, okay, your churches, your popes, pastors, ministers, all these false prophets are going to be taken that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them. I repeat, which he deceived them that have received the karagma, you see? And them that worship the image, all right? Which is the system, see? They were all cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone, which is created by the ICBMs, that thermonuclear fire, people. Show you another one, all right? Uh, what is that? Revelations uh, 20 and 10. Again, all right? And the devil, and again, people keep telling you, it's not talking about the spiritual entity, Satan. It's talking about man. So let's go to that right away, devil. Right? And the devil, Diablos. Strong's G1228. Diabolos. Diabolos. See, he's a slanderer, slanderous, accusing falsely, false accuser. See, here's the key. Applied to a man, I repeat, applied to a man who by opposing, and we already read Thessalonians 2 and 4, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called the Most High, all right, or that is worship, so that he, as the Most High, sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High, right? That's Esau. Well, this is talking about Esau, see? The devil applied to a man whom by opposing the cause of the Most High may be said to act the part of the devil, right? So the human counterpart here on earth or to side with him, right? They're devil worshipers, right? They're Satanists, right? There you go. See? All right. What else I want to show you people? All right, let's go to something here. Give me a minute. All right, this is Revelations 3 and 10. All right? We're really going to get into it uh, when we come back, all right, because I don't have that much time here. Um, so we're going to come back, uh, I believe, with part four. Give me a minute. Yeah, when we come back, we're going to get into this. All right. First, let me read it here anyway. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. See that? No words. You know, you're, you're dwelling in the court of the Lord. All right. No words. Give me a minute. All right. This is Revelation 12 and 12. All right. What does it say here? Therefore rejoice. Ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. So, like, you know, starting with the elders on down to us that are in these scriptures, right? We're dwelling in the heavens, which means this, we're dwelling in the courts of the Most High. What do I mean by that? To show you, okay, further proof, you can go to Psalms 91. We'll tell you that, All right? Give me a minute. This is Psalms 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place, which is what? These scriptures, all right? You're dwelling in the court of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. See that? And he shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings thou shalt trust. And his truth shall be thy shield and buckler, all right? And what is it? Psalms. 65 and 4. All right? Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy courts. Okay? We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. All right? Dwelling in the court of the Lord. All right, give me a minute. All right, we'll be right back. 
All right, with uh, part four. All right, shalom.